May I now call upon Honorable Heid Hautala, Finland's Minister for International Development, to um, make a presentation. Welcome, Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been looking forward to this opportunity to, to get to know the Wongosi Institute because uh, it is a result of a very close Finnish-Tanzanian cooperation, which we called the Helsinki Process. And I was delighted to see this autumn, uh, sorry, this winter uh, in Helsinki, um, in a very wintry landscape, um, Foreign Minister Membe and uh, other friends from Tanzania and from all around the world who came together to, to explain that uh, the Helsinki process actually had managed to put in place vital networks for global problem solving in many uh, areas uh, such as climate change. Of course, that remains a huge challenge, but nevertheless, uh, the Helsinki uh, process was based on the notion of uh, putting in place uh, multi-stakeholder cooperation. Partnerships of new kind where uh, governments, uh, private sector and the civil society come together to look for, for pro solutions for, for problems. And um, now um, I think we have an excellent opportunity here to, to uh, discuss what really has happened to the world in the recent years. Uh, from uh, the development perspective. And uh, uh, the first remark I'd like to make is that uh, prosperity has increased in the world as a whole, and the economic prospects of developing countries have improved, but they have become more diversified. The world map has changed, and um, here uh, traditional uh, players such as the European <coughs> Union, even the United States, have been strongly challenged by, by new actors such as China and more and more the other uh, emerging economies, Brazil, uh, Indonesia, uh, etc. So uh, here we are uh, thinking about how we have to react to the ch global changes and how we have to build new kind of partnerships because the global challenges have indeed um, uh, become even more uh, demanding and, and more urgent. Just in a few weeks time, um, uh, the Rio Plus 20 conference in Rio de Janeiro will come, uh, come together to look for, for instance, uh, a more stronger architecture, global architecture for sustainable development. And here, my government has taken the stand that we we cannot uh, overemphasize the need to integrate truly the three dimensions of sustainable development. Unfortunately, organizations are usually only able to think in one dimension, and I think it's very humane, uh, but um, uh, we do need to bring the economic, the ecological, and the societal aspects of, of, of development together. And, and uh, besides, I, I emphasize that Rio Plus 20 must be apart from being an environmental stock-taking conference on environment, it must also be a major conference on development. And again, we have a possibility to bridge gaps between uh, the less developed and the more developed countries. This is an exercise that is absolutely vital because otherwise I don't believe that we come to binding agreements on such issues such as climate change. Uh, indeed, one can take note of the fact that global progress has been uneven globally and inequality both within and between countries has widened. Some countries have been left behind of the global prosperity and this, their, situation, their situation has a danger to worsen. Uh, but interestingly, uh, not only middle-income countries have experienced growth and development, but also uh, many least developed countries have uh, achieved uh, results. And uh, again, uh, it's useful to see that actually uh, by far the most poor people of the world live in, uh, in other than least developed countries. And this is a challenge for development policy, which we could discuss. How can we promote uh, and how can the international community help with poverty in a, in a country like India, which has a lot of own resources and is a democracy by, by uh, all criteria, 
uh, how can we actually uh, turn to, to India and, uh, and uh, uh, salute some of the achievements that have been uh, put in place in, in the area of social protection and still say that India has the biggest responsibility of its own, own for people. Uh, in the Finnish development policy, which we have revised recently with the new government, we are uh, uh, determined uh, to invest uh, our resources in least developed countries because we believe that their official development assistance still plays the biggest role. And we can even say that it, is, um, it has a counter-cyclical effect and certainly in the, in the, most, um, in, in the least developed countries also uh, the real impact of uh, official development assistance is still significant. However, at the same time, I think we have to see that even in the least developed countries, we have to see that um, uh, we need to give the official development assistance more and more a catalytical role. And this means that we have to respond to countries like Tanzania and others who have decided that one day they want to be uh, independent of international assistance. Today I had a very interesting discussion with the Minister for Natural Resources um, and I fully understand that he doesn't want to give us a year by which this should happen. But I think uh, as development partners, Tanzania and Finland uh, can uh, um, try to take steps into this direction. This is our common uh, ex explicit interest. Um, when we look at the, the new actors, um, the, the BRICS countries. Obviously, the new resources to international development cooperation are very welcome to, to developing countries. And um, this um, expands the dialogue on development beyond the traditional playing field. Uh, recently, I, I was delighted to see that uh, in uh, uh, the most important uh, development con international conference uh, last year in Busan in December, uh, India, Brazil and China uh, took part in the outcome document of this aid effectiveness conference, which is a, is a new blueprint for the, the coming three years on, on how the international community will work in development. Obviously, there are many different approaches, but I, I believe that there is a case for, for uh, converging some of the ideas which look different from, from uh, the point of view of India or from the point of view of Sweden or Mozambique and we can more and more uh, tread on the path of, of what we could call the sort of trilateral cooperation. Finland has some experience of trilateral cooperation in Mozambique with Brazil, and uh, I'm very, very interested to learn about the practical outcomes of this cooperation. Now, um, I believe that today the, the main uh, aim of uh, development assistance and development policy should be to support developing countries in their own efforts to, to build a um, solid basis for societal development and also for a, a, a solid tax base. There I believe we need um, also international global uh, governance. Um, in the new um, program of the Finnish government, or let's put it this way, in the program of the new a Finnish government which was uh, uh, installed a little less than a year ago, there's a very strong e emphasis on, uh, uh, on uh, um, trying to, to, to work uh, to evade tax, tax havens, to make sure that there, is, um, there are new innovative resources for development which might take uh, the shape of uh, 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 transaction taxes, etc. Uh, also, together with my, my colleague, the Foreign Minister Erki Tuomio, we co-host a conference in Helsinki in just a couple of weeks' time on tax justice, because we believe that the, there is not only the, the question of overspending in, in many countries, um, uh, but there is also the question that uh, some of the tax uh, revenues that, that belong to the states are evading them and are, are uh, being invested in, in tax havens and also the, the international competition has, has more or less uh, compelled governments to, to lower taxes on, on capital, which means that governments have less potential for, for spending on welfare and uh, services that people necessarily need, such as education and health. 
So, um, with our joint efforts uh, with the civil society movements, the so-called tax justice network, we want to, to look for solutions where governments also can, can and, and must play an important role. Uh, it has been mentioned, and it is, is very evident, that today we have to look into the possibilities of, of uh, countries like Tanzania and many others to, to um, take into use their uh, natural resources in a sustainable and beneficial way. Uh, here I want to emphasize the importance of good governance, transparency and openness of public decision making and investments policy and its regulation. Because um, uh, democratic and inclusive decision making on how to allocate the new resources which can be drawn from uh, natural resources ensures that the fruits of that new prosperity are wisely and equally shared by the population. Uh, if one would fail to address these issues, then indeed we are going to get what is now commonly called resource curse. And I think we have many warning examples that we don't want to, to, to repeat and, and multiply. On the other hand, I think there's a great potential for, for putting in place um, legislation uh, which allows for such a transparent and sustainable uh, use of, of natural resources and which ensures uh, an, an equitable um, division of, of those revenues. Interestingly, I, I cannot fail to mention that the same discussion that prevails in many developing countries today about the need to ensure uh, revenues from mining industry and um, the necessity to avoid um, uh, environmental uh, destruction is also conducted in Finland because Finland is, is a northern country which has been uh, discovered to be very uh, mine, mining uh, uh, rich, let's say that the, the extractive industry uh, is very much looking into the, the far north just as it is looking for, 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 the, for the south. So um, a relatively uh, rich, developed, affluent country can have exactly the same kind of discussion than than, for instance, Zambia or Ghana or, or Tanzania. And here Finland is, um, is uh, very much um, uh, interested in uh, strengthening the work with our development partners on uh, uh, the transparency aspect. Uh, I was uh, very glad to hear that on Thursday the Tanzanian government will present a new report on, for the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative of which Finland is a party. And um, um, it is delightful to see that Tanzania aims at becoming a full member of this organization, which will be of great help in, in designing the new, new policies. Uh, also, I must mention that the role of uh, international companies is, is uh, important. Uh, at this moment, in the European Union, there is an accounting directive in the, in the making, which actually, if it will turn out, and if it will be enforced as it now looks, at the very final stages of, of uh, legislation, it will um, uh, enforce a situation where international EU-based companies must report uh, payments that they uh, direct to uh, host uh, governments. And I believe this would be one step towards transparency uh, of uh, international companies vis-a-vis -vis host countries in the South. Um, it took some time to realize that this directive really can become a development tool, but that's how I see it anyway. Uh, finally, I would like to raise a couple of issues uh, that the traditional Nordic uh, development partner, partners can bring to the development policy in this new compelling situation. I believe that the better inclusion of women into decision making is such an uh, issue. Um, and in general, the participation of those uh, who are in the weakest position in the society, vulnerable and marginalized groups uh, in the development, and uh, we need strong, responsible public institutions that are accountable to democratic control. Let me also point out that uh, how we phrase our new development policy program, we clearly state that sustainable development results can only arise when there is a free civil society. The free civil society is, is the best guarantee for accountability and uh, uh, to uh, the free flow of ideas 
uh, and suggestions on, on how a country should develop. So, um, uh, for us it's, it's self-evident that in, in every deliberation on development policy we, we include the civil society and we feel that they are uh, often the most strategic uh, uh, actor in, in bringing about development. That's why uh, how the, the new government has actually decided to increase its uh, support to, to civil society organizations. Uh, we also need to put in place an, an enabling environment for business and let me point out that it is striking that actually what businesses need to operate in a sound way is very much what a free civil society requires, namely rule of law, uh, transparency, participation. And uh, I will close uh, to, to state that I believe that these are the, the most important uh, preconditions for, for development in the future because indeed we need partnerships, we need to bring uh, different actors together, otherwise I believe that we're wasting our time, we're wasting our scarce resources and we cannot afford to waste time because the situation of, uh, of uh, many countries and uh, many people in the world requires our deliberate actions and and the contributions. So thank you very much for, for inviting me here. <laughs>